I'm back with more medical coding review. Today we're going to be going over the musculoskeletal system. So if you're a CPC student, this would coordinate with your chapter eight of your CPC curriculum. So let's get into some musculoskeletal review and then some practice scenarios. Hey there everyone, if you're new here, I'm Victoria Mole, I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator, and on my channel I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you and others be successful in a medical coding career. So I have started a new series where I'm going to go through different systems in medical coding and kind of going to follow the pattern of the CPC curriculum because that's one of the most popular credentials that medical coders go for. So we're going to start with integumentary last week and then now we're getting into musculoskeletal next week I believe is respiratory. Definitely get back to the channel because there is a whole playlist that I'm putting together of all of these great resources and other great resources. So you definitely want to make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get alerts when I post new episodes. Let's start with just discussing some of the CPT coding. Now this is a huge section in your CPT book. In fact, if you just open up your CPT book and kind of look at the color coordination there, that musculoskeletal system section there is pretty, pretty big. And that's because it accounts for all the different bones in your body and all the different procedures that we can do all on all of those bones of the body. In CPT, you can kind of see here as I have them laid out, they usually go from like top to bottom. So we're starting with our head down to our feet. Now for each different bone area, you're going to see some of the similar procedure types in there, the incisions, the excisions, manipulations, repairs, fixations, etc. So we start with our general. So we under the general, we have incisions, we have wound explorations, which are commonly for patients who maybe had a gunshot or a stab wound, and they have to almost widen that area to explore what kind of damage was done in there. Uh, we have excisions, replantations, grafts or implants, and then other procedures. Then we're gonna start with the head, and we're gonna see some of those procedures repeated here. The incisions, the manipulations, head prosthesis, other procedures, introduction or removal, repair, revision, reconstruction, other procedures, fracture or dislocations. And then when we move on to next to the neck, similar things, incision, excision, repair, revision, reconstruction. When you're looking in CPT and you start with one of those words, those that repair, that revision, that reconstruction, that's going to give you a ton of codes in the directory. So sometimes it's just easier to know if you're doing a repair of the head, if you're doing a repair of the spine and just check that chapter index in CPT and find your code that way. See, ICD-10-CN and CPT guidelines are a little bit different. So ICD-10 has very strict guidelines where it tells you that in order to find the right code, you have to start in the alphabetic index, follow that through, go and find it in the tabular list, and then you know read the instructional notes if you you know if you need an additional code or if that's not code is not found there. But in CPT, there isn't an official instruction. It's just you have to find the code that best represents the procedure was actually performed. So you don't have to start in that alphabetic index in CPT. You can go right to the chapter. If you know that you're doing a procedure on the uh, bones of the wrist, you can go right to that section that says forearm and wrist and go, okay, what kind of procedure was this? Was it an exc excision? Was it a repair? Was it an amputation of, of, you know, the hand or wrist? So you can go that way instead of having to search through maybe a million repair codes in the index and find it through there. So with the neck, we have incision, excision, repair, revision, or reconstruction, fracture, and or dislocation, and other procedures. So similar procedures of the humerus and the elbow. Same thing with forearm and wrist. We have the incisions, excisions, repairs, manipulations, fractures, amputations, etc. We do have some arthrodesis in here as well. Hands and fingers, incisions, excisions, repairs, revisions, fractures, amputations, pelvis and hip joint, as well as the femur. Same kind of thought process. But then legs, we just have incision, excision, introduction or removal, repair, revision or reconstruction, as well as fracture and dislocation. And then we get down to our feet and toes. Remember, I told you this is going to go from top to bottom. Incision, excision, repair, revisions, fracture, arthrodesis, amputation. And then finally, after we've gone now from head to toes, we also have some additional procedures here as far as application of casts 
and strapping. So that's also included in here. Now, depending on what type of procedure you're doing, the cast or strapping might be bundled in. So that's something to start getting familiar with when you're doing a procedure, you know, on a repair of the leg, is that cast then included? So we have body and upper extremity, we have splints, strapping, lower extremities, we have removal and repair, and then we have a section right at the very end that's endoscopy and arthroscopies. Now let's talk a little bit about ICD-10-CM. So I don't wanna go through every single ICD-10-CM code combination because there are tons for each and every single bone of the body, right? And all the initial subsequent sequelas and character extensions that we can have for different types of fractures. So there's just way too many, but the bulk of ICD-10-CM codes that pertain to the musculoskeletal section are going to be in chapter 13 of ICD-10-CM, which is diseases of the musculoskeletal system and connective tissue, as well as chapter 19, injury, poisoning, and other certain consequences of external causes, and then chapter 20, external causes of morbidity. Reason I included chapter 20 is because oftentimes when patients are fracturing something, there was some kind of external cause, right? It's because they, you know, were in an accident, they fell, they were crushed in a machine. So something happened and we wanna include those when we have the information on the surrounding circumstances in regards to that scenario that happened. And then with musculoskeletal, we surely cannot forget our HICPIX codes because we're gonna need things like orthopedic and prosthetics. We're gonna need basic orthopedic supplies, crutches, canes, walkers. Now, I'm not gonna to get too much into DME, so not every medical office is able to bill for DME. There are certain requirements, but there are medical coders that actually just work at maybe DME supply stores. So depending on where you're working, you might work a lot with hip picks if you're especially billing out for those DMEs, those canes and crutches and walkers and wheelchairs. So here are some of the top concepts I want you to keep in mind when when you're coding for the musculoskeletal system. First and foremost, that open and closed fracture doesn't always mean open or closed treatment. So just because there is a closed fracture, that doesn't always mean it is a closed treatment. So you have to be very careful when you're abstracting pieces of text and translating them into codes that you're not inadvertently confusing the type of fracture with the type of treatment. So an open fracture is one that has pierced through the skin, so the bone is visible. And in a closed fracture, you can't see the bone and it hasn't pierced through the skin. Now, closed treatment and open treatment are different. So closed treatment specifically means the fracture site is not surgically open, so the surgeon isn't opening, opening it. It's not exposed to the external environment. It's not directly visualized by the surgeon. So this terminology is used to describe procedures that treat fractures by three different methods, with manipulation, without manipulation, or with or without traction. So those are key words that you wanna be looking at to abstract from the note as well when you're coding. Also, open treatment is used when the fractured bone is either surgically open, so exposed to the external environment, and the bone is visualized and they might use internal fixation in these cases, or it might be that the fractured bone is open remote from the actual fracture site in order to insert a nail across the fractured site. But in that case, the fracture site is not really opened and visualized. They're just doing it to insert the nail from a different location. There's also percutaneous skeletal fixation. That's another important thing to look out for. And that is a fracture treatment which isn't really open, it really isn't closed. So in this procedure, the fracture fragments are not visualized, but fixation is used. So often like pins and external hardware, and that's placed across the fracture site. And usually it's done under x-ray imaging. So they're kind of looking at it under x-ray as they're placing all of these pins and hardware. And then lastly, endoscopy and arthroscopy. So many joint repair services can be billed as either open incisional services or as arthroscopic services. So the key words you wanna look for in that operative report when you're scanning, and sometimes when you get with operative reports, it's good to either underline or highlight certain words 
because just as you're going along, like you start to get a feel for what then is important and what's not important. So maybe you highlighted something and then you realize, oh, well, that doesn't really impact code selection. But then you know that for next time, like, oh, I thought this word kind of meant something, but then I went to look it up and it didn't really impact my code selection. It was this word that I highlighted. Uh, so keywords that you would look for in the, in the operative report and you might want to highlight or underline. So something you might want to look for in the operative report is a scope or a port was placed and that can alert you to an arthroscopic service. And also be careful about those parenthetical statements that are below the codes to indicate when something might be included in another service. Now there are actually 260 six bones in the human body. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of consideration in the musculoskeletal system about sight and laterality. So maybe not just that it was a procedure on the wrist, but was it the right or the left wrist? Which metacarpal was it? Which phalange was it? How far down in the finger did we go? Cause you know, there's going to be different procedures for if we're taking off a, you know, doing an amputation of a phalange versus a metacarpal. So lots of things to think about with those different bones, the different locations. And it's really important that providers document things like laterality, even if we're doing something as simple as a bone injection, we want to know if it's in the right knee or the left knee, correct? Because that's important for our specificity for our documentation. We're even seeing more and more insurances now that they want to see something like laterality and they will even deny a service if you're going to give a super unspecified code that's not even going to tell them which knee you injected. And as many bones as we have, there's even more muscles. There are over 600 muscles in the human body. And I know this is definitely true for me, but the biggest muscle in the human body is the gluteus maximus. So your muscles perform many important functions that are critical to your health. Things like movement, things like digestion, and even the beating of your heart. We have all kinds of procedures that involve cardiac muscle. Now let's get into a quickie question here. So what ICD-10-CM, and I want to start with ICD-10-CM because there are some, some neat chapter guidelines in regards to coding for fractures and they might test you on some of those protocols. And this is one that they like to test on. What ICD-10-CM codes are reported for a patient with age-related osteoporosis evaluated for a new fracture of the right humerus due to a fall from the couch? So out of these four selections, which one would be best? Now, some of you are probably gonna argue with me right away and go, Victoria, but what about we have an unspecified location and we could have used XYZ code for that unspecified location? We're just looking at out of these four options, which would be the best option. So one of the first things I want to do with you is look at our chapter 13 guidelines. So if we look at the guidelines for chapter 13, number two, it says here osteoporosis with current pathological fracture. So category M80 osteoporosis with current pathological fracture is for patients who have a current pathological fracture at the time of an encounter. The codes under M80 identify the site of the fracture. A code from category M80, not a traumatic fracture code, not a traumatic fracture code should be used for any patient with known osteoporosis who suffers a fracture, even if the patient had a minor fall or trauma, if that fall or trauma would not usually break a normal healthy bone. So if we go back to our coding scenario here, we have a couple options. We have two that we can see have that M80 on it. And then we have ones that have M81.0. <laughs> so there's a couple of ways we could tackle this. We could tackle this as an exam question and just use our process of elimination. Right away, I'm gonna eliminate A and, and C because those start with M81. And our guideline here says that we're supposed to use a code from category M80. So I'm thinking those M81 codes are probably out. If we look at B and D, we've got M80.021A and M80.821A, and then the W codes are the same, so we don't have to pay too much attention to those. So what's the difference between the M80.021 and the 821? Let's actually start this one out by going into the alphabetic index. So I want to start that way this time. So do you think we're going to start with, I think we start with osteoporosis. So here is our osteoporosis. This is with current pathological fracture M80.00, but I'm betting that's the super unspecified code. Let's see if it has something. Oh, here, 
with current pathological fracture, age-related. That's what we've got here, right? It says for a patient with age-related osteoporosis. And next, what are we going down here? With current pathological fracture, yep, that's what we've got. Uh, it's not the carpus, not the clavicle, not the finger. It is the humerus. That's what we've got right there. Fracture of the humerus, and it's a new fracture. So right there, M80.02. So we can tell that's what we're looking for. It's definitely going to be B at this point now, right? So M80.02. Let's go take a look at it, and then we can make sure that we have the right character extension. So M80.021, age-related osteoporosis, current pathological fracture. Is this right or left? What does it say here? It says right humerus. So we're here, M80.21, but it says right there we need a seventh character. What the heck is that seventh character? Well, it tells us up here. Is this the initial, subsequent, with routine healing, delayed healing, malunion, uh, malunion non-union, sequela? Well, this says it's new. So new means that it's the it got to be the initial, right? Because we're not, if it's new, it's certainly not healing yet, and it's not a sequela. So that means it would be an initial. So we would get to our M80.021. A. And that W08XXXA code is actually a fall from other furniture. So there's not a code specifically for the couch. There's one for chairs. I don't know that I would say that a couch is necessarily a chair, um, but there is one for other furniture. So W08XXA. Now we're going to get into some CPT coding. So the patient presents today for closed reduction of a nasal fracture. The depressed right nasal bone was elevated using heavy reduction forceps, while the left nasal bone was pushed to the midline. This resulted in a good alignment of the external nasal dorsum. What CPT code is reported for this procedure? So just for a little bit of demonstration, I'm gonna highlight some of the words that I kind of think are important in here. So one of the first things is this is a closed reduction. So closed reduction is a key term here, that closed reduction and it's a nasal fracture. So those are probably the first things I'm gonna look for is closed reduction of nasal fracture. And then I might take a look and see what I have after there. So if there's other keywords that I wanna look at maybe next, cause maybe I need something more specific, I would go, okay, is there a code for depressed nasal fracture? Is there one for with forceps? Is there one for push to the midline versus somewhere else? Um, you know what is the next thing I want to look for as far as specificity? But I think this is a good starting point now is that it's a closed reduction of a nasal fracture. I think for this case, it might be fun to demonstrate to you both ways that we could tackle this problem. So first we could go into our index in the back of the CPT books. Remember our index and CPT is in the back, not the front. And what would we be looking for here? So what's the key term is the closed reduction. So we're gonna work, look maybe for the word reduction. So I looked under reduction and what have we got here? So we have reduction, amniotic fluid, breast, forehead for fracture. I'm actually not seeing a lot here under reduction. And what was this again? A reduction of a nasal fracture. Nasal fracture. What if we look under fracture? So fracture humerus, fracture of the nasal bone is what we're looking at. Okay, here we go. Here's something. Fracture of the nasal bone. I'll move you guys down in here. So for nasal, we have closed with manipulation, without manipulation, and then open. And let's see here. What is this? This is a closed reduction. So nasal bone closed treatment, and then this is our code range, our 21310 through 21320. So let's check those out. If I was looking this up in the CPT book, I could just go to head and then fracture or dislocation, and look, that's gonna take us to just about the same range there. So we were at 21310. So let's take a look at our fracture and dislocation code. So we have a couple different ones here. We have closed treatment ones. This one's a without manipulation, without stabilization, with stabilization. And then we get into our open code, but we didn't do open. We didn't do percutaneous either. We did a closed treatment. So closed reduction of a nasal fracture. And this one here says without manipulation, but we did manipulate that bone because it says there they pushed it back into the midline. So in that case, we're gonna look back over here. Now we didn't do stabilization, 
So 21315, closed treatment of nasal bone fracture without stabilization. So we didn't place any external devices, so this would be our right code. 21314, closed treatment of nasal bone fracture without stabilization. This code is more so if we, we don't require manipulation, maybe we just do a prescription medication and some ice because it's going to kind of heal a little bit more just through some light therapy versus we have to manipulate that bone back into place. So when we look at our options, we are at code 21315. So that one was answer C. Now this case is a 52 year old patient previously treated with external fixation for a type 3A left lateral condyle tibial fracture. There was now a non-union of the left proximal tibia and he is admitted for open reduction of tibia with bone grafting. Approximately 18 grams of cancellous bone was harvested from the iliac crest. Fracture site was exposed and the area of non-union was, was osteotomized, cleaned and repositioned. Interfragmentary compression was applied with three screws. The harvested bone graft was packed into the fracture site. What CPT and ICD-10-CM codes are reported? So we're going to look at a couple of different things here. So let me get my pen out and I'm going to just, so this is now, he's admitted for an open reduction of the tibia. So that's one thing I'm going to look at, the open reduction of the tibia. And this bone grafting, I'm thinking might have something to do with it as well. Um, the fracture site was exposed in the area of non-union. That might affect our ICD-10-CM code, right? Because it was a area of non-union. So this is a not yet yeah, non-union of the left proximal tibia. So let's take a look and see what we can find. So what do you guys think? Should we start with the ICD-10? Should we start with the CPT? Well, let's look at some of our answers here. So it looks like two of the C, we only have two different CPT codes here when we actually look at what we're doing. Uh, we have these 27224, 27224, and then we have 27222 and 27222. And then each of these has different ICD-10-CM codes as well. So I kind of want to start with our CPT and see what we can find from there. For this one, I'm going to do what I would do at the actual exam. I'm going to go right to the codes, 27724 and 27722, because those sound like they're probably right next to each other, right? When we look at these two codes, 27722 and 27724, they've got the same parent description. So repair of non-union, which we pulled that term out, right? Or malunion of the tibia. So that's our location. So we got the we got the non-union right, we got the tibia right. This one though is with a sliding graft, and this one's with iliac or other autograft includes obtaining graft. Remember, autograft means that it's from the patient's native materials. So in this case, it, we would be looking for probably them taking bone from one area and moving it to another. So yeah, so it says here, the area of non-union was osteotomized, cleaned and repositioned. And then it says the harvested bone graft was packed into the fracture site. So that to me doesn't sound like a sliding graft. That to me sounds like an autograft. So right away, I can eliminate two options because I've determined the CPT code is 27724. So I'm going to get rid of B. I'm going to get rid of C. Now we need to determine, is this the right ICD-10-CM code or is this the right ICD-10-CM code? And again, I'm just going to look these up in the book and see what the difference is. So it could be one of these two codes, S82.122, displaced fracture of lateral condyle of left tibia. Or it could be S82.102C. So 102C, and that is an unspecified fracture of the upper end of left tibia. But we did specify what type of fracture this is. So this is definitely the lateral condyle left tibia. So I'm thinking it's this code, but we need to verify that character N too, right? So let's see, that's on this page over here. So N is a subsequent encounter for an open fracture type, oh, 3A, that's in our documentation, right? Type 3A, 3B or 3C with non-union. And that's another term that's in here, non-union. I don't even know what that C one is. Let's take a look here. So C would be, if it's an initial counter for an open fracture type 3A, 3B, or 3C. And I can see in here that there was an open reduction, but I actually don't see anything about the fracture itself being open. There was a malunion, so it did heal, just not properly. 
So for this one, we're looking at A27724 LT, because this is the left side. Remember, got to have that LT modifier on there, and S82.122 N. I hope this video series is helping you out and you now feel smarter and stronger about your musculoskeletal system coding. Don't forget to like, share with your friends, and subscribe. I will see you guys back soon for respiratory, but until then, you guys just keep on coding on.